Hey everybody, this is Rachel. I wanted to first of all say thank you for those of you who are coming back and those that have subscribed to those that have written in the comments. Thank you. I'm very excited that you've been interested in some of the things that I've had to say about Meghan Markle. And um, of course, to those of you that have found me today, please check out those other videos. And I hope to um, educate and entertain those of you that have stopped by this particular video. So I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different today. As you can see in the title of the video, that's probably why you're here if you searched it out, Philip Schofield. Now, Philip Schofield for American audiences is pretty much unknown. However, he is actually in an episode of Ted Lasso with um, Holly Willoughby on this morning. There's a clip in one of the episodes where Jamie Tart, after getting kicked off of um, Love Island or whatever show they were, whatever reality show he was in on the second season, he goes on to a morning program. And the gentleman with the white hair is Philip Schofield. And so why do I care about Philip Schofield and what's going on right now in England? Well, first of all, there is a major, major scandal that is brewing right now in ITV, which is one of the major networks over in England. I would equate it to, you know, ABC, CBS, NBC over here in America. Um, in England, there's BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, and Channel Four. Those are kind of the big four networks. Um, that are on every television set. Of course, obviously things have changed. There's um, other news sources through satellite and cable and things like that, but those are the basic four stations that everybody gets. And so Philip Schofield has been on television since the 1980s. And why do I care about him? I care about him because I grew up with the man. Um, he actually started his career as a television presenter for children's programming. And I was a child in the 1980s watching him present television shows to me that I would watch in the afternoon or on Saturday mornings. So he was somebody that I was very familiar with, had all these warm, fuzzy feelings about because I grew up with him. And then, of course, when I moved to America when I was 11, in my connection with British television, unfortunately, because the advent of the Internet wasn't around yet, um, didn't have satellite TV to be able to watch English programming. And I actually came across this morning on um, YouTube and I clicked on it because, oh, it's a British program. Let me just see what's going on. And I recognized his face and I was like, oh my gosh, I know that guy. So I did a quick Google search and I realized, yeah, this is who I think this is. So I started watching this morning on YouTube because I remembered him and I had lots of warm, fuzzy feelings towards him and it was a familiar face and it made me feel connected to England, to my childhood. So I loved watching this morning. And he was a co-presenter with a woman named Holly Willoughby. And Holly Willoughby is um, also well-known in England. She's much younger than Philip Schofield. She's probably about 20 years younger than him. And she was a presenter on The X Factor back in the early 2000s. And so that's how she got her start in television was through that. And X Factor is also an ITV property. So that's how everything kind of got interconnected and got hooked up. And while Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby became very, very good friends, it's well documented. Um, they took holidays together. They're, they were well known to be very close and to get along very, very well. And part of that chemistry offset is what helps their show be so successful. But things have dramatically changed over the past couple weeks. So there were um, rumblings in the press that there had been a falling out between Holly and Phil. So obviously that's a problem if your television presenters on a show where the two of you are sitting on a couch next to each other, have to interview people, have to laugh together, have to get along, have to, you know, make people in the morning happy, right? That's your job. It's like the Today Show. It's exactly like the Today Show. You know, you have to believe that people like Hoda and Jenna get along. And if they don't get along, then it becomes problematic because even though they may maintain their professionalism 
on set and do what they're supposed to do, read the scripts, are polite to the people that are coming on the show to be interviewed, you can still feel the energy and the chemistry if something is off. And so after all these rumblings were going on, Holly and Phil presented one more episode together. And after that, ITV made the decision for um, Phil to leave um, this morning, the name of the show, and start presenting other shows on ITV. They were actually going to create a new program um, for him to host because ITV didn't want to lose Phil as he had signed a very lucrative contract with them. But also, you know, he's such a well-liked public figure for the most part. Um, he did have a scandal after the Queen passed because he and Holly actually did cut the line to um, view the Queen's casket. And that was a big hullabaloo of, well, why did you get to cut the line? You know, you should have waited. It's like, if David Beckham can wait in the line for God knows how many hours, so can you. You're not a dignitary, you're not a family member, you're just hosts of this morning. So that was really kind of the big scandal that had gone on. But of course, like, people had kind of moved on from that, not a big deal, whatever. So then, um, all of a sudden, rumblings are starting that Philip Schofield had an inappropriate relationship with a staffer on this morning. So we need to reverse time a little bit, and we need to talk about something that happened in 2020. In 2020, he actually publicly came out as gay on, on this morning. Um, it was a huge deal. Um, it was him kind of talking about his struggles with, you know, being closeted, finally deciding to come out to his family because he was married and I believe he has two daughters. And so kind of talking about that and finally, you know, he is at a point in his life where he felt that he needed to speak out and, um, you know, live truthfully. And so, of course, there was a lot of support you know, no reason not to be supportive. And so it was a big, big deal on this morning. And so all of a sudden we're finding out that even before then, he may have been involved with this young man. Now here's the issue, right? This young man apparently met Philip Schofield when he was 15 years old. And I guess this young man at that time somehow met him through people connections, what have you, because he was interested in going into television himself. And the story is effectively that he was looking for mentorship. And so who would be a better mentor than somebody like Philip Schofield, who has been in the business for, you know, 40 years, who knows what he's talking about, famous, popular, all that stuff. And apparently their relationship at some point turned from a mentor mentee into a boyfriend boyfriend relationship. And so the issue becomes a did this really happen when this young man came of age that it became a romantic sexual relationship. And the other issue is of course the power dynamic you have somebody like Philip Schofield who is running the show at this morning, who is the top talent, who is very powerful on the show. You have the power dynamic issue there. And you also have the vestiges of Jimmy Savile. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, Jimmy Savile was also an incredibly, incredibly famous um, British um, media figure. He was on the radio. He did Top of the Pops. He did television shows. Jim will fix it. Um, he did uh, big charity runs. I mean, this man was one of the most famous men in Britain. He was so famous that he actually had a friendship with the royal family and apparently allegedly gave Prince Charles marital advice when his relationship with Princess Diana was crumbling. So that is how ingrained and well-loved this man was. Well, it turns out that he was the worst of the worst in terms of being in a, and I have to use, you know, less frank language, but inappropriate behavior with girls. I, I believe there are some allegations of young men, but apparently it's girls who were minors 
of um, SA, and I think if a lot, if you watch a lot of enough of YouTube and videos and stuff that discuss stuff like this, they use kind of code phrases, but SA, um, and uh, that went on for decades, and it was as as bad as you can imagine it. That's what happened. I mean, he was a prolific, prolific, terrible human being in this sense, and completely. Um, harmed a lot of people. And that also kind of led into the whole, um, what is it, Operation U Tree, where they found out that Rolf Harris was also engaging in this same kind of behavior. Um, Gary Glitter was engaging in the same kind of behavior. Um, so this was very deep. And this was all in BBC. And, and there are allegations that BBC knew what was going on, and they covered it up. And so, of course, everybody, justifiably so, was horrified um, when this happened. And so now ITV is potentially being accused of a cover-up, that they knew that Philip Schofield um, may have been engaging in inappropriate behavior with this young man um, and, and whatever. The, and again, this is allegations. But Philip Schofield did admit on his Instagram that he was engaged in a relationship with this young man, but he categorized it as not being illegal. Um, so that gives hints that it was at least after this young man turned 18. And um, and even if that's true, let's just give Philip Schofield the benefit of the doubt that nothing in terms of a romantic relationship occurred until this young man was 18 it still poses the question of a power dynamic relationship because this was a young man who, you know, was low level on the set of this morning. Um, he was not, you know, top tier talent, anything like that. He was um, effectively, it seems like a staff writer, maybe. So he was, he was nothing. And there are now um, allegations coming out that um, this young man would be given private cars to and from Philip Schofield's house. Um, so, it, you know, that the, the thought is, and this is from Dan Wooten over on GBN News, it's like, look, you know, who's going to pay for that? ITV has to pay for those private cars. So ITV would have known, you know, that if this young man is being driven there in the evening and being picked up there in the morning, he's probably staying the night. And not all overnights are inappropriate, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, people work late and f fall asleep. It's too late to go home. It happens, right? You stay the night at a friend's house. It's not the end of the world. But if this is habitual, it seems a little bit more than just a friendly crashing at somebody's house. So ITV is in a world of hurt. So after this disclosure came out from Philip Schofield on Instagram a few days ago, um, ITV completely fired him from the program that they were going to be working with him on, which was going to be his own program, an evening style program. Um, and his uh, talent agency, which he's been with apparently like 25 years, and he actually is part owner of it. He owned shares in the business, fired him. And part of that is all of these parties are claiming that Philip Schofield lied to them multiple times about what was going on. Because apparently um, back in 2019, multiple parties had contacted heads at This Morning and ITV and had made some allegations of inappropriate behavior between Philip Schofield and this young man. And apparently an investigation was done, um, but everybody denied it. And so ITV just moved on. And so ITV, so Philip Schofield in his statement basically said, I lied to my bosses. I lied to my agents. And so now they're all wanting to wash their hands of him. But the big problem is, is how deep does this go? Has Philip Schofield been engaging in inappropriate conduct with more than one individual over time? Who knows? Um, has ITV just buried and ignored things? 
like Jimmy Savile. I hope not. I hope, I really hope that this is an isolated incident. I really, really do. And I hope that it was just really poor judgment on Philip Schofield's part. Um, and that, you know, he, that this young man was 18, that, um, there was nothing inappropriate other, otherwise inappropriate, but I don't know. Um, and so I think that if ITV is smart, they're going to get an independent investigator involved because it's got to save the credibility, not only of the program this morning, but of the network. If the network is co-signing onto this kind of behavior, they have to have a, an outside investigation, in, investigative team come in and look at it. And quite frankly, they need a clean house at this morning. They need to get rid of everybody and start fresh if they want to keep this morning alive as a brand. Um, and theoretically, you could cancel this morning, but that's a lucrative time slot. You know, every network has a morning television program, and that's here and, you know, in England and other countries around the world. It is lucrative. People watch it. It's a way that people start their days. And so what are they going to do? Start a new television morning breakfast show and call it something else, but have the exact same format. It doesn't change anything. You know, they've got to completely revamp everything and they have to regain the trust of the British people because right now it is not looking good. And the other thing is too, I watched an interview with Dan Wooten on GBN News who interviewed Eamon Holmes. Eamon Holmes is another very, very famous British television presenter. He actually used to also present on This Morning, but he's done the news for decades. I mean, this guy is top tier when it comes to British newscasters. Everybody knows this guy. And his wife is actually, if you've ever seen Loose Women, his wife Ruth is also on that show. And Loose Women is basically Britain's answer to The View. And so she's been on that show as well for years. And um, Eamon Holmes in this interview lays it out. And I encourage you to look it up um, because Eamon Holmes is done. He, he's, he worked with Philip Schofield. He knows Philip Schofield and he lays it out. He basically calls Philip Schofield a liar he's blaming the network. I mean, he is going after them and basically is just completely putting everything out on the line. And I kind of do respect Eamon Holmes for this because Eamon Holmes, he's no longer on ITV and he got fired because apparently he said something inappropriate. And, you know, it's kind of a la Pierce Morgan kind of stuff. Um, but still, like, honestly, because I remember him again from when I was a kid, and he's somebody that I look up, I looked up to, somebody that I trusted with the news and, um, and other, you know, presentations. Um, so for me, if he says something, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to, you know, trust what he has to say. And I think listening to Eamon Holmes and the tone in which he was talking, A, I think he definitely has an ax to grind. B, he's very angry, but C, I think he's coming off, quite frankly, as somebody who's honest. Because sometimes when you get to that point, when you're just exhausted of lies and annoyed, you just don't care anymore. And you're just like, look, here it is. I'm going to say what I need to say. You can believe me if you want to. You don't have to. But this is what I have to say. Take it or leave it. And um, I feel like he comes off as very credible. And he actually talks about the relationship he and his wife had with this young man and that this young man um, had been struggling. And that's the other concern that I have kind of based upon the hints and cues that Eamon Holmes was giving. I do have concerns for this young man's mental health. And um, I wonder if ITV is going to be protecting this young man and making sure that he's okay in the way that they had clearly protected Philip Schofield. So this is a big deal. I'm going to continue to follow this because, um, you know, it's just a lot of memories of me being a kid. And so I do want to watch and see what's going on and continue to follow it because this is a huge scandal. And I hope that it doesn't reach Jimmy Savile lovers levels, um, but who knows, it might. So I'm going to keep it here, keep it locked. And um, thanks again for listening. Um, 
and I hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye.